Okay, my friends, so today I'm back and we can do a detailed, detailed discussion uh, on what I started yesterday from the, uh, from the Brahma Sutras, Antar Upatte, the being inside the eye is Brahman. And so yesterday I said uh, to you that eyes do not see uh, and the ears do not hear and you do not perceive anything you have never been conscious and uh, this is difficult to grasp you have never been conscious you are consciousness itself so let's examine this in detail only consciousness can have experience only consciousness can be conscious only consciousness can be conscious that which we call me mine i here this is an experience in consciousness and it's a continuing activity in consciousness as i've said it's not a noun it's a verb but uh, this is who we identify with, this separate body-mind activity uh, that believes this is its identity and then this experiences itself as the separate self in, in the sense that uh, the experience, cognitive and perceptually, seems to be, there's me, and there's everybody else, there's everything else. There's me, there's the bookshelf, there's the sofa, there's the bed, there's you, there's computer, there are rocks and plants and animals and stars and galaxies and subatomic particles and force fields and gravity. This is how we experience life. And as a result of this separate self, we have of course, also have fears and anger and hostility and many times, uh, uh, of course, uh, other fears, old age, infirmity, death, all of that. This is the human condition, unfortunately. And this comes from not only false identity, but actually an experience that is not really real, uh, not really real. Okay, so let's explore this a little bit and let's uh, be a little patient and bear with me, okay? So bear with me right now. Um, let's start with a simple principle. You are where your awareness is. So if I tell you, put your awareness in your toes, that's where you are. If I tell you, put your awareness on that bookshelf, that's where you are. If I tell you, put your awareness on your body, in general, that's where you are. Once again, you are where your awareness is. Where attention is, because attention is also a property of awareness. And where intention is, that's where you experience yourself. I shouldn't have said you are where your awareness is. You experience yourself wherever your awareness is. But let's uh, uh, do a little experiment right now. So where are you having the experience of the computer screen uh, or the device that you're using right now to access this information? Mm -hmm. uh, put your attention on that or put your attention on any object, but any object that's out there, okay? So I'm going to only talk about seeing, but what I'm saying applies to all the five senses, okay? Seeing is easier to explain, but it applies to all the five senses. So if you're seeing an object in the distance out there, so-called, where is the experience of seeing that happening? And some people, when asked this question, they'll say the experience of seeing that object is happening where the object is, where the object is. 
And the objection to that is, if you are here and the object is there, then how could you be experiencing that object there? Because you're here, right? So that doesn't seem uh, reasonable or logical. So now let's extend this experiment and say, uh, when some people ask the same question, where's the experience happening um, of that object? They say it's happening here in the eyes or it's happening in the brain. And as I've said before, your eyes are 2.5 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. Your retina is curved. And by the time photons enter your retina, they cross over. So the experience of seeing an object out there is happening in your eyes, then you should see two objects curved and upside down. So if you're seeing me in eye right now, and the experience is happening in your eyes, you should be seeing uh, two of me uh, about this size and upside down. Obviously, that's not the experience happening. Something is happening in your eyes. Let's call it electrochemistry. Okay. So some other people will say the experience is happening in the brain. And the brain, of course, is whatever, 12 by 15 centimeters by 10 centimeters, about three ounces. How does a mountain fit inside the scale, uh, inside the brain? How does the Milky Way galaxy fit inside the brain? How does the ocean fit inside the brain? And that's what you're experiencing when you're looking at an ocean or a mountain. And uh, um, that doesn't seem likely. What's happening in the brain is also electrochemistry. So, uh, of course, these are often referred to as the hard problems of consciousness based on false uh, ontological principle, false ontological primitive, which is physical reality. But... Um, these questions will never be answered if, uh, if, uh, if we continue to hold on to the idea of a physical reality. Furthermore, by the time you have the experience, it's over. I've said that before. So by the time you hear these words, they don't exist. And by the time you see something, also, that particular experience is over. It takes a little bit of time if you believe the current explanation might take a few or minuscule nanosecond for light to enter your brain and then the experience happens. So whatever experience you happen, you happen to experience, whatever experience you have is actually in the past. By the time you hear my words, they're over. So by the time you actually look at me, what you looked at is over. So what you're seeing is the past. It doesn't matter. If it's a nanosecond or a few billion light years, doesn't matter. The principle is the same. We are all ghosts and every object is a ghost. And we are in a collective dreamscape because it's all past. It's over. Or then you can imagine it's over. But where is this experience that we call now happening? Okay. First of all, it's happening here, out here, okay, which means in the space around you, in the space around you. And as I mentioned before, the space, even one centimeter in front of you, or one inch in front of you, is connected to all of space, intergalactic space, right up to the cosmic horizon. So the experience is happening in space, in emptiness, in our gosh. And that is where awareness must be. Fundamental awareness must be. And uh, now put your attention into space right here. And try it next time you're in a shopping mall or on the street. Experience reality from here. And what do you experience? You experience this and all this simultaneously okay moreover it's changing this is changing and all this is changing um, there is an arising of people objects um, you 
in this space, all at the same time as an entangled experience. So in this awareness, where you put your awareness here, slowly, identity becomes this, this emptiness in which this and all this is rising simultaneously as a happening. And then it also subsides. Whatever experience arises, it subsides. Just go to a shopping mall, put your awareness here. Indoor shopping malls to be safe so you don't, you know, bump into traffic or accidents. Put your awareness here and experience the world from here. Okay? You're experiencing the world from cosmic space, which is unbounded. And now, this is where I am is. And in I am, this and all this simultaneously arises. If I were to give it a quantum mechanical explanation, I would say, this is where there is a causal, non-local, quantum mechanical interrelatedness. Or as the Buddhists would say, in this space is the matrix of interbeingness. As Thich Nhat Hanh might say, or did say, we are interbeings that interarise in the interisness. And this is the matrix of being, awareness, consciousness, existence. In this, simultaneously, all arises. There's no separation. And when we start to experience reality from here, then automatically there's empathy and compassion and joy and love and equanimity and loss of the fear of death as well, because this never dies. In fact, in this all arises, all is experienced and all subsides as an activity. So go to that shopping mall, put your awareness here, know that you're connected to intergalactic space and everything in this emptiness. And this emptiness is recycling as this, this and all this, but it's also changing. Not only recycling, but also changing incessantly in what we call eternal now. Here is the eternal now. And that eternal now is not in time. Time is born the moment you shift your identity from here to here. So this is me and mine, as we normally refer to, or we also say, this is Deepak Chopra, this is John Smith with the biography. So in this space, these sentient beings with their biographies and their body minds are also arising and moving on and subsiding. They're born, they go through transition, they disappear. But this is the eternal now in which the experience of time is also born. And with the experience of time is born also, the separate conditioned identity that we call ourself, me, myself. But this me, myself is an activity simultaneously with all activities in this space. Okay, so try this experiment slowly so that you um, move from the separate self into the entangled self and then from the entangled self to the one self and then there is only joy and there is uh, freedom and there is a knowingness that transcends the logical thinking that we are so used to so let's say i am is here me and mine is here but me and mine is a changing activity of I am, and I am is the only reality. And therefore, all experience, which means all perception, all knowing, all experience is here in the eternal now. And that's our true home. We come from that, we have this experience along with all the other experiences, and then we leave.
just like the breath. It arises, it's experienced, and it's gone. That's why Vipassana is a good exercise as well. Okay. I am is here, me is here. When I let go of me and shift here, then I am not only the non-separate self, the, I become the entangled self, and ultimately I become the one self, in which all sentient beings and all objects arise and subside simultaneously in entanglement. And so the eyes don't see awareness here sees but it can see through the eye as an instrument and then it can identify that experience is happening here but it is not happening here this is an experience this is also an experience here so when i said you perceive nothing i meant the body mind perceives nothing the body mind is a perception when i said you are not conscious it's true, you as the body-mind are not conscious. You are the consciousness in which the body-mind is an experience. So you have never perceived anything as the body-mind because the body-mind is a perception. You have never conceived anything because that conception is based on false perception. The body-mind doesn't conceive or perceive. And you as the body-mind are not conscious because you're an activity in consciousness. You are consciousness itself, Brahman. Whether it is experiencing the world through the eyes or the ears or any perceptual apparatus, it is Brahman. Local and non-local, it is Brahman. Sleeping or awake, it is Brahman. Dead or alive, as an experience, it is Brahman. On or off, it is Brahman. Visible and invisible, it is Brahman. Brahman is non-local awareness, which you are. Not subject to birth or death. Prakritim swambhashd by Vishrajami puna puna. Curving back within myself, I create again and again. I am that in which all experience is conceived, all experience is perceived, all experience arises, all experience is there for a bit, and then all experience subsides. But I remain as I am. So many times people ask me, you know, you must get tired, you're traveling so much and this and that. And I, you know, I don't like to be facetious or clever or, you know, um, difficult in my remarks. But the fact is, I don't travel. My body mind travels, but I've never left home. And that is how we should experience life. Don't leave home. Let your body mind travel as me and other, knowing that I am, is me and other at the same time. Because without the other, there is no me. As the Africans say, Ubuntu, I am because you are. But that I am is the body-mind. The original I am is all this, never born, never gone. Bhagavad Gita, water cannot wet it, wind cannot dry it, weapons cannot shatter it. Fire cannot burn it. You are that. Unborn and never gone. Okay, now sit with this experiment for a bit, okay? Because it's not easy to grasp. Because we have been so bamboozled by the conditioned mind and false identity. It's on LinkedIn, your identity, your name and your biography but you're not your name or your biography, you're that in which the name and the biography arises and subsides. Take care, my friends.